If I was going with a bunch of young men and women on a bus and we drove by a beautiful mansion, it's just a gorgeous house on top of a hill, on the other side there's the ocean, just an absolutely beautiful stunning house and the, the driveway into the house there's a gorgeous car parked outside and on the back of the house there's this incredible backyard and a swimming pool and all of it. I mean whatever you can imagine is there. It's like it's a piece of Jannah on earth. And you see the guy walking into his house. We're driving on this bus and we see this guy walking into his house. And I asked these young men and women, do you think that guy's successful? Do you think he's successful? Overwhelmingly, what is going to be the response? Yeah, that's pretty successful. And the guy, look at him, look at what he's accomplished in life. That's a pretty successful person. Okay. When you take a picture of someone graduating from college, they're shaking hands with the president of the university, they're being handed their diploma, and somebody asks you, what, you, you think that's successful? What are people going to say? You know, it's going to be Muslims and non-Muslims. Everybody's going to say that that is a kind of what? Success. When somebody gets a job, is that a kind of success? Sure. We congratulate people when they get a job. When somebody buys a house, when somebody starts a business, when somebody gets a new car, when somebody gets married, when people accomplish things in life, then we, we celebrate them because these are different kinds of small and big successes. Isn't that true? So the bus keeps driving. And we see a, a man, a homeless man, who's living in a cardboard box on the street. And he looks like he's wearing clothes from a couple of years. And you don't want to go close to him because of the smell. And I ask my students, do you think that guy's successful? What do they say? I say, he's not successful. Now imagine if I was riding in this bus, but in this bus there were not Muslim boys and girls, but there were Christian boys and girls, or Jewish boys and girls, or atheist boys and girls, or agnost boys and girls, or Buddhist boys and girls. And I asked them the same exact question. Do you think their answers would be the same? Yep, their answers would be the same. That's the problem. The problem is the way we think about success and the way we think about failure. For Muslims, it's supposed to be different. All human beings can see it a certain way, that's fine. They have the apparent view of success and failure. But us Muslims, Allah has given us clearer glasses. And once you look at reality through these glasses, you see something other people cannot see. You see something other people cannot see. So when you put those glasses on, then you start thinking about the Book of Allah and you realize that one of the most beautiful captivating, magnificent homes that was ever built was the castle of Fir'aun. It was one of the most amazing homes ever built. And if our bus was driving by the castle of Fir'aun and he was walking into his house and I asked my Muslim children, is that successful? Is that guy successful? What would their answer be? Fir'aun is not successful. He's the wor one of the worst losers in all of human history. Isn't that the case? What was the second kind of person we, met, we ran into? There was one guy walking into a mansion. What was the other guy? It was a homeless guy. Okay. Ibrahim salam was kicked out of his house. He was told to leave the house. So he's homeless. Well, was he successful? He was. Actually, he's one of the most successful human beings that ever lived. Now the Quran is teaching me that a homeless man is successful. And an incredibly wealthy man is what? A failure. You know what that, the Qur'an is teaching me? The Qur'an is teaching me that success has nothing to do with wealth. And, nothing, and failure has nothing to do with poverty. Success and failure are different concepts for us than they are for everybody else.